Aloha, I am geologist Philip Ong, bringing you another Kilauea quick take. This week, eruption stops as event drowns. What's next? We'll start off with a thermal time lapse from the USGS HVO F1 camera showing the end stages of surface lava last week. Southern and western ponds, the last to cross over by May 20th, and gas building up just enough under that crust for the few final bursts of lava. The last lava is visible on the surface on May 23rd, marking the end of the eruption. Two small pads of lava on the eastern edge of the southern pond, one of which still continues to glow after four days. A similar view is captured by the USGS at dusk in this May 24th photo. These photos zoom into the glowing spots and to the still glowing west vent as well. Here's a full lava lake crusting sequence since April 20th in a western area closest to the vent. And zooming back out and back to the start of the eruption, we see that the crusting process started early on in this eastern area behind the Big Island before propagating westward around it into the area of our original zoomed in view, where the complete hardening of the lake surface occurs 153 days after the eruption began. Consequently, on May 26th, the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory reported that Kilauea Volcano is no longer erupting issued a new volcanic activity notice lowering the volcano alert level from watch to advisory and the aviation color code from orange to yellow, while also updating their website to reflect the change in status. On screen now is a USGS graph showing the depth of the lava lake for the past month, measured continuously at a fixed point on the surface. In the notice, they note that the lava supply, quote, appears to have ceased between May 11th and 13th based upon elevation measurements of the lake surface that show that the surface was no longer rising. The graph shows that, here, with the final two pulses of depth gain on those dates, even though it looks like the crusting process at this fixed measurement point may have begun back on May 5th, based on the change in oscillation pattern at that time, and didn't complete across the whole lake until May 20th, with the last small lava bursts on May 23rd as noted in the thermal imagery. Looking at volcanic gas measurements directly linked to the lava output rate, there was a corresponding reduction over the past month. USGS first notes, Lava supply to the Hale Ma'uma'u lava lake has ceased, and sulfur dioxide emissions have decreased to near pre-eruption background levels. In this week's Volcano Watch, USGS adds, the eruption rates and SO2 gas emissions declined precipitously after April 16th, coincident with the level of lava in the lake reaching the level of the vent. This relationship suggests that the colder, degassed lava within the lake essentially drowned the vent. This profile section shows the elevation of the lava lake at different dates during the eruption. The lava level recently reaching the level of the west vent here on the left. Seen from above, these incremental lake contours are showing the shape of the west vent above the lava surface early on. By the later dates, the lava level has reached the height of the vent. Here's a past year of gas measurements to illustrate. They add, changes in the lava lake have been accompanied by a drop in gas emissions to level close to pre-eruption background level. Once again, more details from Volcano Watch. Both erupted lava volume, approximately 8 million cubic meters or 10 million cubic yards per day, and SO2 gas release, 40,000 tons per day, were extremely high at the beginning of the eruption. These exponentially decrease over the course of the eruption to about 70,000 cubic meters or 90,000 cubic yards of lava per day, and less than 1,000 tons of SO2 per day by early to mid-April. Noting the current state and remaining hazards, quote, Minor fume emanating from previously active areas within Hale Ma'uma'u crater is producing a weak plume at the summit of Kilauea. Visibility of the plume varies with humidity and temperature and may be stronger in the early morning. Levels of volcanic gas, sulfur dioxide, and carbon dioxide remain locally hazardous even though Kilauea is no longer erupting. Sulfur dioxide gas emissions have greatly decreased. However, local concentrations of sulfur dioxide or hydrogen sulfide may persist in downwind areas. And residents may from time to time notice odors of these gases. Looking at the plot of ground tilt for the past month, we can see something else described by the USGS in the notice. To quote, since May 11th, there has been weak inflation and an increase in shallow volcanic tectonic earthquakes at the summit, suggesting magma entering the system is being stored at depth. The USGS also says, Seismic tremor persistent during eruption has weakened significantly, but continues to indicate some shallow magmatic activity. Here is the summit seismicity they refer to, on this plot of the past month, coloring earthquakes by depth. You also see the May 23rd magnitude 4.2 under the south flank, as the volcano adjusts to the redistribution of pressure in the system, including on a refilling upper east rift. All of this is happening within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, which thankfully means minimal human impact. They add, significant hazards also remain around Hale Ma'uma'u from crater wall instability, ground cracking, and rock falls that can be enhanced by earthquakes within the area close to the public. All in all, they conclude, quote, These observations indicate that the eruption in Hale Ma'uma'u at the summit of Kilauea Volcano has paused, 
It is possible that the Hale Ma'uma'u vent could resume eruption or that Kilauea is entering a period of quiescence prior to the next eruption. On our last quick take, we already discussed the possibility of reactivation, mentioning 2018. But we can also note that the USGS mentions pauses during eruptions in the Lower East Rift in 1955, Kilauea Iki in 1959, Mana'ulu from 1969 to 1974, and of course, Pu'o'o from 1983 to 2018. Beyond that, we shared the century-long hardening process for the lava still under the crust. We've noted how unlikely that would be, given the frequency of activity, with 28 summit eruptions and an additional 15 summit subsidence events occurring in about 40 out of the last 100 calendar years, the previous 100 years showing essentially continuous activity, as shown on this graphic from Hawaii Volcanoes National Park Service website. The 1960 summit collapse shown here followed the eruptions of Kilauea Iki and Kapoho, but it did so through a similarly crusted lava lake from 1952 with a still molten interior, which is seen draining here into the new pit. Original photos by the USGS, including a cross-section of the process, then finally superimposed distemporarily to enhance the effect, to show what sorts of things are possible in the future with a crusted 2021 Hale Ma'uma'u lava lake. As we await and keep an eye on what happens next, so does the USGS. Quote, HVO continues to closely monitor Kilauea seismicity, deformation, and gas emissions, and maintains visual surveillance of the summit and the East Rift Zone for signs of renewed activity. There are currently no indications suggesting that a resumption of volcanic activity is imminent. Volcano Watch adds, Statistically, most eruptions that resume do so within three months after pausing. For now, we can only watch and wait to see if activity returns to the same vent system ending the pause. Or alternatively, if the eruption is truly POW, we may be entering a period of quiescence prior to Kilauea's next eruption. That is our quick take this week. Mahalo for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe so you don't miss the latest updates on our Hawaiian volcanoes. Aloha.